Okay, welcome to part two of my tutorial. This one's on audio and MIDI ed, uh, recording. Um, this is for Magic Sample 2 Music Studio 2014. Now we are still in <clears throat> the easy workspace mode and I'll stay in here for a little bit. But uh, the first thing you may want to do is beats per minute up on the top beside your um, recording interface that's with the, the little uh, play and fast forward and all that you'll see that there is a number 120 up here which you can change by clicking on it or you can tap the tempo. In this case, you know, if you just tap here on this little lock and it will indicate the speed that you are tapping at. For this example, we will go at 110 beats per minute. I'll just type it in. You can do that. Say OK. So now you see that the indicator up top says <clears throat> 100 beats per minute. You also have now <clears throat> the shuttle right now moves freely to any position as you can see you know it's it's saying position 5, 0, 4, 370. If you want to have more control over that <clears throat> sorry for the <clears throat> rallies in my throat um, you can go ahead and put the snap on just below the uh, position markers. Here there is a snap indicator and you can snap it to beats um, and have some uh, different options here on the way it snaps. Also quantizing um, it has various settings here. Right now we'll just keep it at the current uh, settings. Um, so let's just play and let's take a listen to the tempo. Okay, let's stop this for a second. Now. We always use the Y key to bring up the options. So if you want to change the options on your metronome, changing the beats, the, uh, the, the um, wave file it uses, it, it, it will allow you to do so just by seeking it out in the, uh, looking for the audio file that you want to use. Right now we'll, we'll keep it as as default but th there it shows you the option so the Y button brings you up this uh, this uh, options interface which is very handy so keep that in mind the uh, whoops the uh, um, Y key on your keyboard will always bring this up so let's uh, let's do a little bit of recording now just double check that you know that when you click on a track, that'll be your active tr track. However, it doesn't mean that it's the one that it's recording on. The one that it's recording on is the one with the big red button for audio recording. It would be a big pinkish, purpley kind of thing. I don't know. I'm sort of colorblind, so it looks kind of pinky to me <clears throat> when you are recording MIDI. Just double check that you have the right device selected. In this case I'm using my live chat um, the live chat microphone that I have on my headset and we will do something simple here. We will do a simple uh, do re mi. Here we go. Ready? Click record. Do re mi fa so la ti do and stop. Um, 
do we want to use this? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll use it. Although I'm monotone all the way through it, I'll show you how to edit that later on so that we can go in key. Now you'll uh, notice if we zoom in here, you have these little bars on the side and at the bottom and you have little uh, zoom in and zoom out but we'll zoom in so that we can take a look at our wave file that we have created here and you'll notice that when it stopped it it did stop on the one eighth note at the very end of the wave file now for the second track we will swap over to use MIDI instead and we will attach our keyboard to it. Alright so I have stopped and resumed the recording on my keyboard here. You'll uh, be able to hear that. That is a, an old 1980s Roland PC200 MIDI keyboard controller. It's It's got a basic modulator pad on it and it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to show you that basically you don't need like uh, you know a $4,000 keyboard. Uh, this thing was probably uh, 100 bucks at the time. You can probably find them for like 5 bucks on eBay or something. They're pretty they're pretty old and simple. All right. So, um, basically same thing applies. We have our our uh, track selected. Now, what may happen is hit the Y key. You may have to switch to your ASIO driver system for this kind of stuff. It all depends on your computer. So, if you have to, you know, you switch to your a pick your ASIO or whatever it is that 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 you are utilizing at the time um, for your driver. For me right now, um, MME is perfectly fine. Uh, it works well. It gives me a good response, no latency. The drivers included in here for Magic are really actually good. And if I have to, I usually go with the 2008. It uh, for me, um, just maybe because I'm using an XP computer right now. Um, I also use this on a on a laptop as well, a uh, Windows 7 uh, laptop. But uh, for me, uh, on this um, computer, because it's an old XP, although well, it's still great, it's got maximum. Uh, RAM on it and it's got a, uh, two uh, CPUs. Actually we'll go ahead and, and assign the CPU on here <clears throat> and uh, we'll go back to the MME settings because that's what I had it on. It works perfectly fine as that. Hit OK. Now let's get into recording. Now we got to go back to assigning it uh, MIDI recording once again because when we go ahead and change the properties there sometimes it it will default these tracks back to um, what it was before. So let us do a recording from C on so that we can kind of match up to what we were doing here on on the uh, on our recording here on the audio. So we play it back, we'll probably hear my voice being played as well. Here we go. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And stop. We will use that recording. And you'll notice that I did kind of a mistake at the end, but we'll show you how to change that in our editing section of our tutorials, which will be next. So I'll click OK to use that.
and uh, you know you heard maybe a little bit of extra on that recording because we have the snap on uh, we can bring our snap back to the end of uh, this point here and so we've evened up our recording we can go in and edit them further on our next episode all right thanks for tuning in